Good day. Welcome to My Health Cebu. I am your host, Dr. Steven Seno. So in this show, we talk about health concerns and health matters. And today is somewhat something that is tangential to that. So we're talking to uh, a, a remarkable young doctor who was able to tap the Philippine licensure exam last sep September 2021. So I have with us today via Zoom, uh, Dr. Jude Philip uh, Pozon Sebrecos. No? He is the board top notcher from the Cebu Institute of Medicine. We're happy to have him here. And he's going to tell us a little about his journey uh, to getting to that spot and to doing that achievement and um, knowing a little more about uh, how difficult or easy it was to do so in unusual circumstances as he was taking it in the midst of the pandemic. So Dr. Jude, good day and welcome to the show. Welcome to My Health. Um, good afternoon, good morning everyone. Okay. Uh, good day. Good day. Uh, hi. Okay. I'm glad, good day. I'm glad to be here. See you. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Right. So Dr. Jude, I know that um, as a young doctor, uh, uh, you are still very busy. No, I understand that you're undergoing a, a pre-residency and, and I do hope that you get it and you are successful in that and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to, to join us and to share with us your journey to um, the Philippine uh, Physician's Licensure Examination. Okay, so maybe let's start off Jude with uh, getting to know you a little. Uh, so Dr. Jude, are you, are you really from Cebu? Um, and, and was part of the plan yes. really to study in Cebu? Okay. Yeah, so I was born and raised here in yeah. Cebu, mm -hmm. like in Cebu City. And yeah, I've always planned um, to study here. Mm -hmm. So ever since I was young, I actually had like my life plan laid out, like what I wanted to be, okay. cool. like when I grow up. Yeah, so ever since I was child, I knew I wanted to become a doctor okay. and then um, I didn't know then uh, what pre-med course to take mm. or what med school mm. um, to go to, but then, uh, you know, like I hear advices here and there mm. on what's the best option, mm. but I always knew I was going to uh, go into a Cebu medical school. Yeah. I had no plans of going to, to any other institution because right. like, I wanted to be close to home. I see. So you're yeah. really Cebu-based and you wanted to study in Cebu and then we're so fortunate here yeah. to have so many you know, schools to choose yeah. from and then of course, you you chose um, Cebu Institute of Medicine, and then, um, but before we go there, um, at, at what age did you mm -hmm. think that you knew there were going to be a doctor? Um, at what earliest recollection of you mm. wanting to be that? Probably when I was uh, maybe between eight to ten years old. So I was back back in grade school. I knew even then. Mm. So I think a big factor would be like both of my parents were doctors. Mm. So. Mm. Sometimes um, they don't really have the time, like out of their busy schedules uh, for us. So sometimes they would bring my siblings and I to the hospital. So I was very uh, exposed early on, and then I just felt really comfortable inside the hospital, and I see what uh, what doctors do inside the hospital, and it kind of inspired me. And then I think that was like the starting point of uh, why I wanted to pursue medicine. Right. And then, um, so there's more than one sibling. Uh, how many siblings are you in the family? And then, yeah. are you the only uh, one in actually, medicine? Or is there more than one sibling in it? Uh, we're three siblings, actually. Right. And I'm the youngest of three. Mm -hmm. And then all of us uh, went through the same path. Mm -hmm. So both of my older siblings are also finished medical school mm -hmm. and are also currently in the residency program. Oh, so. Wow. The three of us are doctors, and both of my parents are doctors, so we're a family of five. Right, right. So uh, no, I guess um, the influence was, was very early on. No? And as soon as you realized yeah. that this is what you wanted to do, you, you stayed on the same track. Uh, so throughout, while I while I vacillating, I'm not, I'm not or no oscillation, no point. Uh, maybe it's not medicine. No. Maybe it's something else. No, sure, again, No. Yeah, I think I think maybe that's something I wouldn't really know because I. All I've been exposed to mm. was really one field, right. so I didn't really get to develop any other interests. But then, luckily enough, at least like the thing that I was exposed to, mm. which was medicine, mm. was something that I grew to love. I so no. I think maybe, probably maybe predestined, right, or no. maybe very providential. That I to medicine. No, now you had this laser focus yeah. at the very early <laughs> age, and then, um, yeah, so fortunate that you you really come to love it, no, um, <laughs> and and likewise it has loved you in return. <laughs> As as, yeah. as it has um, yeah. been uh, successful so far, no, in, in such an yeah. early 
part of your career. So, um, and then uh, got getting into med school, what was that like? What were the first few years of medicine like? And of course, no, it, it changes. No, and, and, and they say that the first few years are the most challenging. Was it, was it true in your case or did it, did it come easy to your second nature? Um, it was difficult to adjust at first, especially with the Cebu Institute of Medicine. Mm -hmm. Like how they, uh, they, how they did their classes was different from the usual mm -hmm. um, traditional lecture style. Mm -hmm. So it was a new thing to adapt to. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, like uh, adapting to the numerous pages, huge volumes of information that you have to learn, mm -hmm. like in a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. So that was something that even I had to try getting used to. Mm -hmm. But then eventually, uh, maybe like early on, like I knew what I was getting into, I knew it was going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I would be any exception to that. Right. So yeah, I think I mentally prepared myself. So it also helped when I actually experienced it. Right. So probably a few months, let's say the first three months, mm -hmm. I had a difficult time adjusting, mm -hmm. but eventually I found my own group. Right, right. Yeah. And it's also it's good to school. have um, a family who understands exactly what you're yeah. going through. So yeah. um, not just your parents, yeah. but also your siblings. So if at a certain point, or even siguro during mga um, conversations which are very casual, they'll probably bring it up. And then so that kind of prepares you mentally as well. No? So for that part of your of your training no? uh, in, in uh, first year yeah. or second year. And then um, did, did the, because uh, Cebu Institute of Medicine or CIM does a, a problem-based learning approach which really asks you, you know, to communicate and to uh, do uh, social learning exercises and did that come easily to you? Are you naturally uh, loquacious, conversant, open about your thoughts? Is that something that was easy to, to, for you to do? Uh, um, I'm really a, like a more um, introverted as a person mm -hmm. so um, I don't really initiate a conversation first unless I get really comfortable with a person. Mm -hmm. So back when I was in first year, so I was thrown into a group. Right. Uh, and in my group of around 10, yes. um, I didn't know anyone. Mm -hmm. So m most of my batchmates had, uh, for my pre-med course, had someone with them in their group, but mm -hmm. I was alone. So oh. it was kind of difficult for me. So okay. yeah, so for the first few months, I think that was also a factor as to why I had like, a difficult time adjusting right. since I had to uh make new friends right. because i would be with these guys for the rest of the year mm -hmm. so but then eventually like we became friends and i think when i become comfortable with a person mm -hmm. it becomes easier for me to express myself and to right. communicate with others okay. so so yeah. Kanesha, um it's it's good that you're sharing with us now on the introvert extrovert spectrum you tend to lie towards the introverted <laughs> side um, but introverts are supposed yeah. to be very meticulous thinkers no they're very careful no? and very observant as well, yeah. which, which may be uh, a strength no? as you go into, into the profession that you've chosen. And, but it does, it does test. No? Uh, it can be rather taxing for yeah. introverts to yeah. be asked to express themselves, to communicate openly to other people, especially in large groups. No? So yeah. I, I guess that, that social learning exercise, exercise was a, an adult learning experience that will eventually help you for the rest of your life. Um, so, I'm curious, you, you did not take up a typical pre-med course because no one of your classmates were your, were your batchmates. What did you take up for pre-med, Dr. Ju? Uh, I took up medical technology okay. actually mm -hmm. and a lot of my batchmates proceeded to medicine mm -hmm. but uh, maybe when they made like, the groups like randomly, ah. like I was isolated okay. with other people right. who I didn't know. Okay. Yeah. So that makes sense. But in the class, you still had classmates who, who took up the same course as you. Okay. All right. Um, would you have chosen another pre-medical course? Do you think um, another pre-med, now that you are looking back at it, would you have thought maybe another pre-medical course would have been more interesting or would have served you better? Mm, actually, I didn't know <laughs> about medical technology mm -hmm. when I first enrolled in it. Uh, both of my siblings, we actually went through the same path. So both of my older siblings also went through medical technology right. and then you know, uh, there was like a trend, there was like a boom in mm. medical technology around my time mm. when they say like, oh, it's the best preparatory course mm. if you're planning to go into medicine. Okay. And then in retrospect, I don't regret my choice actually. Because mm. uh, most of the subjects uh, we had in medicine, um, it was likely touched on mm. during my medical technology mm. years. 
So it wasn't that hard to transition. Right. Also, okay. personally. Yeah, because but when you get to the clinics, they also really refer to the laboratories. Yeah, you being a med tech, have yeah. all of that information. No? Yeah. Maybe, so it maybe it yeah. could have been easier for you to understand, you no, know, these laboratories. And now that you yeah. have a clinical background, more easy to um, interpret. Yeah. Okay. So that's easier. Advantage. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And then um, moving on into the clinics. No? So like say first year, second year, and then when you transition to third year, fourth year, and then finally your PGI years. Um, or postgraduate internship years, then you enter the clinics. So I guess introverts can struggle a little in the clinics, right? because yeah. you, you're. I had a difficult time. Right, yeah. no, because you're thrusted into all of these yeah. new, new situations and meeting new people, and, and that can be a little taxing and anxious. So how did you get over it? What what made yeah. you think na oh, sige, let, let let me let me try to overcome? So. The first time we were exposed to the clinics, like the actual patients were during my second year of medical school. Okay. So, mm-hmm. when I first interviewed my patient, I was very awkward, mm-hmm. and maybe um, the patient could feel that I was a bit uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I kept on stammering mm-hmm. and stuttering. Yeah. But you know, like, uh, like in the back of my head, like I took it as a learning experience, right. saying that like, I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life, so I have to learn how to communicate with people. Right. So I practice uh just the practice okay. so i don't think the introversion is an excuse mm-hmm. for me like oh uh, like not to be able to effectively communicate with my patients so eventually i learned how to do it effectively right. okay so and, yeah. um so that those are the clinic years and then of course um you you had this uh, support group with you no not just in the household yeah. as we talked earlier but uh you had your class yeah. with you and but that by that time na a yeah. support group okay so yes. uh, it seems it seems as though med school was was not bad for you. No, I mean, w- would you say uh, eight out of ten? Is that how you'd rate it, or am I am I being conservative? Should we go higher, nine and ten, smata? Or or okay, of course, magud. We're seeing magud through the prism of your success, uh, specifically the, yeah. the 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 topping the boards. No, but we we understand magud yeah. that uh, that's just a slice. No? that's just that's just um, a point mm-hmm. in time. No, so leading up to that. Was it always easy for you, Doc Jude? Is that is, am I characterizing it correctly? Um, I would say it was easy, mm-hmm. but uh, probably uh, my medical school journey was kind of s- smooth. Okay, mm-hmm. smoother compared to how others would right, right. Um, describe it. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably because like I transitioned earlier on mm-hmm. compared to the rest of my batchmates, mm-hmm. and I think. Because uh, you know, some people go into medicine and they're not really sure about it. Right. But I went into medicine knowing that I wanted this, right. so I was mentally prepared for it already mm-hmm. before, even before going in. Mm-hmm. Like even though it was difficult, more difficult than what I initially expected, right. Right. I was still able to adjust because, yeah, I knew what I was getting right. into, and I think because like I really learned to love medicine right. from a very early age, right. so that was a huge factor. Uh-huh. So I guess, so yeah. I'm I'm picking up on a few things. So now one, uh, it's not just it's not enough to no? have the, the, the cognitive skills to able to survive um, yeah. a, gra- a doctorate degree such as medicine, but also um, to be mentally prepared for it. And in your case, yeah. no, it's it's been a, a lifelong training, you no, know, to be able to get to yeah. to that point. And then uh, I guess no, not lang, it's just aligned, you no, know, the the skills that you have, um, the mindset that you prepared yourself for. And um, I guess the resilience, the hard work that all paid off, no? So um, they say that med school is, is such a difficult uh, journey, no? That you don't have time for anything else. Is, is that true? Was, yeah, was it? That, yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay. So no extracurricular um, activities for, for you, year, uh, things like that? Um, for the first year of medical school, I decided not to go, not to um, join any extracurricular activities. But then, even back then, like in high school, I I was always active in like student um, student government and other organizations. So when I was in my second year of med school, um, after like I um, eased into medicine, so I joined like a whole bunch of okay, organizations. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I ran for student council, right. and then I also joined an or- a school organization, and then. Yeah, okay. and just about like any activity that I can. So I think that also really helped me because I found like a new, like I found a new support system, mm-hmm. and I also found like a new 
uh, place or something to take my mind off a bit of medicine. Because right. I think that's also that's also something that we need. Right. Like it's it's not healthy to just constantly think about medicine right. all the time. Right. Just think about like studying and reading. Right. So like I needed a breather. So so I joined about extracurricular curricular activities. Okay. So I thoroughly enjoyed like. From my second year onwards. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I guess it is about balance, no? Uh, and then finding that yeah. right balance. So, um, Dr. Jude, we're going to take a short break, and as we come back, we're going to talk a little more specifically about um, your journey through the uh, Physician's Life History exams. So, so our audience, come join us, and um, let's talk some more to Dr. Jude. Okay. Good day. Welcome back to My Health Cebu. I am your host, Dr. Steven Seno. You're catching us in a lively discussion with Philippine licensure, uh, Physician's Licensure Exam Top Notcher last September 2021, Dr. Jude uh, Philip Pozon Sebrecus. So, Dr. Jude, thank you again for coming back and joining us in this conversation about your experiences yeah. you know, leading up yeah. to the Philippine licensure exam. So, we're now here. You know, we talked a little about earlier uh, how you got to med school and how that experience was like for you. And now let's talk about the Philippine licensure exam. So they, they say that the, the PLE, you know, the, that physician's licensure examination, is probably one of the most difficult exams that you're ever going to take. Okay, um, and was that true in your case? How did you feel going into it, and then yes, uh, walk us through that experience I of feel like, the boards. Yeah, I feel like the journey towards the PLE was worse than medical school. Worse than for me, school. I think, especially <laughs> yeah. Especially for our case, I think because like um, we had like a shortened like mm -hmm. uh, preparatory period okay. in between the end of our internship right. and the board exam. Mm -hmm. So usually you're given like two months, mm -hmm. but then in our case we were only given like a little over a month. Okay. So I think it was part of the difficult right. thing. And then um, we did have internships. So okay. and then since um, our internship was curtailed by the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to maximize like the clinical exposure mm -hmm. that I had with my internship. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't able to really focus then mm -hmm. like on studying mm -hmm. uh, for the PLE. Mm -hmm. So I, most of the time I spent studying for the PLE was during those 40 days oh. that we were allotted in between the end of internship and the PLE. Right. So that's why I would say it was more difficult than medical okay. school because yeah. like, I had to cram like four years yes. of medical school in 40 days. Yeah. So for those who don't know, so, you know uh, the Philippine licensure, Philippine Physician Licensure Examinations is taken over two weekends. You know? So it's both Saturday and Sunday, and each day is approximately uh, three subjects. Sakto ba Do you remember it correctly? It's three subjects, no? So approx and then each three subjects. Uh, that's a hundred questions, approximately an hour and a half each. Yeah. No? Okay. Was it an hour and a half or was two it hours, two hours? Two hours. Per so exam. we're talking about six hours times four days. No, so and it's that rigorous. Um, and then you say you only had forty days to do that. When did you end your in, your your internship? Yeah. Um, we ended ours at July thirty one. Okay. So thirty one, yeah. So basically forty days. And the days. board exam was at September ten. Mm, yeah, forty okay. days. All right. And so how did you manage that? So we're talking about um, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, approximately ten. No, ten to twelve subjects. Okay, ten. No? 12, subjects. 12 subjects. So how did 12, you 12. how did you manage 10, 12 subjects in 40 days? It sounds daunting. Uh, yeah, it was very daunting. Mm -hmm. So I think there was um, it was like added pressure in itself. Mm -hmm. Like how am I going to balance studying for 12 subjects mm -hmm. in the limited time that I have? Right. So what I did, um, I think uh, even before, uh -huh. like because of medical school like I was used to uh, balancing right. between academics and extracurricular right. so I didn't have much problem with time management mm -hmm. so I made a very rigorous schedule right. for myself right. oh. so roughly I allotted only two to three days mm -hmm. per subject wow. and then so lot. it's very daunting because you know like you take one subject for a year right. and then I'm supposed to cram it in oh, only two yeah. to three days so I had to compromise a lot of my sleep. Yes. Um, but I didn't compromise my meals because I I feel like I, oh. that's something I wouldn't give up. Because then. what does the brain use no, if it doesn't eat? No, if you don't have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? So. Um, so I think yeah. What was that like? Like you wake up at six o'clock in the morning and end up at like say eleven o'clock at night, and then do that for forty days. Yeah. Is that what you did? 
Yeah. Okay, that sounds more or less good. seven to twelve, seven to twelve midnight. Right, more or and less. then just a few yeah. breaks, and then the entire time your head was in the book, um, you were just focused. Yeah. E- ikaw, um, I guess you, we shared earlier uh, that you are an introvert, so I guess you were studying by yourself, or did you benefit from working yeah. with a group? Ah, uh, you did it on your own. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I isolated myself. Mm. So uh, we moved to a house, mm-hmm. um, like not in the city. Right. So I was relatively isolated. Mm-hmm. So I did. It was just my parents and I. Mm. It's my siblings that are staying. Right. Staying in the city right, right. near the hospitals. Right. So I was just alone, and then I think um, even before. Like if I were to study intensively for something, mm-hmm. I would isolate myself mm-hmm. because like I wouldn't, I don't want any distractions. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. So it's so laser focus, Jun, for forty days. But before this, June, you already had notes, perhaps, or you were already going through the textbooks because vom- voluminous. No, so that's a that's a that's a adverb or adjective I rarely use, but I I definitely would use to describe a medical textbook. Yeah. Yeah. Voluminous, okay? So, um, Voluminous, to be yeah. able to go through that much dearth of knowledge, um, I'm sure you, you prepared for it already because it, it seems impossible to be able to go through, say, 600, yeah. 700 pages in two to three days unless you already prepared for it beforehand. Or what, what is your strategy here? Yeah. Um, so, uh, half of our internship was around online. Mm. So, that was like in the first half of the year in around 2020 mm. so it was online so i did a bit of studying here right, and there right, right, but right. then you know it wasn't that intensive mm-hmm. but then come when we had our clinical rotations mm. so i would just read up on the cases that i see in the hospital because mm. i feel like um i would remember it more so mm. after i see something like see something in my patient mm. when i get home i would read up on the case mm. i would read up um anything relevant about it mm. so that's how I prepared for it uh, mm-hmm. while we had our internship. Okay. So, but then when uh, we had the intensive study period, mm-hmm. so uh, I went back to studying like any review books mm-hmm. that I could find. Right. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, I, I guess no, you, your school really prepared you because one of the, the highlights of uh, the, your choice of medical yeah. school is yeah. rigorous testing. No, they do not stop testing you. Yes. No, so, uh, so throughout yeah. the entire uh, four years, they mm-hmm. test you nonstop. No, so that was, I guess, a little yeah. preparation. <laughs> but are you a notes person? Are you yeah, a highlight also. person? Are you the type? No, uh, not so much highlight. No, I don't actually make notes. Right. No. Um, I highlight just like for the fun of it, right. but it doesn't right. really help because like. Uh, even when I highlight, when I go through my notes, uh, my books again, right. I just read everything. Mm-hmm. So, so it doesn't really do much for me. Like I know, maybe I just wanted something to do, like something tactile, like with my hands. Right. Maybe right. yeah, something tactile. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe say just to get to make sure that you're um, you're done or helps you pace, you know, the highlighting, yeah. but yes, not so yes, much yes, for exactly. like a learning strategy. Okay, yeah, yeah. because I, it varies. Yeah. Some people really do highlight. And then with, with like with a visual memory, they exact they know exactly where it is based on where the highlight was on that particular page. So so yours was really more for the pacing, I guess, you no, know, and the tactile experience. Yeah, but maybe like when I the way I study, it's more of repetition. Uh-huh. So back in medical school, right. I would read it around like like the coverage for an examination. I would read it probably like a minimum of two, right. if I have the time, like three times. Right. So eventually, I would get to remember right. like. Uh, like where it is like mm-hmm. in a certain page mm-hmm. so it kind of helps like mm-hmm. yeah so they read it over and over right. again because i remember when when i was going through that part of of my journey i remember uh, doing a first pass second pass so first path is just like let, mm-hmm. let me just know what the what the forest is yeah. like no, and like, let, same yeah give me yeah. the width and the breadth of the problem just get a, just get a feel oh, of it. Yeah. and then yeah. and then of course something will catch your eye and then you go back to it especially when it comes up frequently and then okay maybe this is important so let yeah. me give a little more focus there so then i would do a second pass and then if if super lucky i would do a third but that is very very rare <laughs> so so you would do three yeah, passes there's, you, there's the exact same strategy right, right, right. uh usually two rarely mm-hmm. the three rarely probably when i was at first year mm-hmm. uh back when i did have my extracurricular you could do so, three okay yeah yeah okay so um, again, 40 days, 6 a.m., 11, 6 a.m., 11, 6 a.m., 11. All right, and then yeah. um, 
I, I, I think your experience could be unique because some people really do need study buddies. You good to go mm-hmm. on your own. Yeah. It's okay. Super independent. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, and then on, on the exam day itself. So when did it? When did you take your board exams? Uh, it, it just September 10, September 11, and then the following weekend. In 1819. Yeah. Okay. Um, so where did you take it? Where in Cebu? Yeah, just here in Cebu. Ah. So all the Cebu takers were just in one, uh, one venue. Okay, just one, one venue. venue. Okay, all right. Uh, were you familiar with the venue? Did you want to do an ocular before the day of the exam to get to fe- get the feel of the venue? Did you do that? Like like an no. athlete uh, <laughs> taking out the stadium or the court before do- doing the game? No, no need. No, I'm not very superstitious okay. as a person, right. so I didn't really. Yeah, I didn't really see the point of going there. Like the day before, I just wanted to rest. Right, right. So right. I didn't bother going okay. doing an ocular. But so long as you know where it was and you found your classroom, okay? Yeah. And then when you started taking the exam, was uh, did the did the how did what is anxiety like? No, when you when you answered your first question and then continued to do so for the next uh, yeah. two weekends. Yeah, it's very nerve wracking. Mm-hmm. Like it's very indescribable. Okay. I mean, like. Medicine is so broad, mm-hmm. and then you're only going to be asked a hundred items right. of a certain subject, right. and you don't know if what you studied would be the ones that would come out. Mm-hmm. So that that was just like added anxiety. So mm-hmm. our first subject was biochemistry. Ah, wow. So that's, that's one topic. of the dreaded subjects for, right. yeah, mm-hmm. that's a, one of the dreaded subjects for every medical student. Mm-hmm. So uh, when I first I got. So before I answer an exam, I usually skim through all the items mm-hmm. first. How you do? Like wow. I don't really, yeah. So I check it first. Mm-hmm. I get the feel of it and see like, get like an overfeel. Like, mm-hmm. okay, I think I can answer this exam, mm-hmm. or maybe like, I'm gonna have a difficult time answering this examination. Okay. So, uh, the first subject, biochemistry. Um, I could say like after skimming through it, I would say no. Oh, yeah. I can. I think I can answer this mm-hmm. uh, moderately. Mm-hmm. It was uh, like from easy, moderate, and hard. I would say it was moderate. Mm-hmm. So it started out. Feeling, I started feeling good about it, right. and then the second subject came. It was anatomy, yeah. and that's my weakest subject. Oh, so okay. yeah. yeah. So when I skimmed through the pages in anatomy, like okay, I'm gonna probably gonna consume the entire two hours right. allotted for this examination because right. right. I'm gonna have a hard time with this. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah, but exam exam wise, Jude. So you 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 did something that I think was very valuable. Mm-hmm. Now, go through everything first. So they tell you, you know, make sure that you have all the pages of your booklet before you start. No, don't yeah. assume that what they yeah. give you is complete because you don't want to be in the middle of the exam and you're trying to catch up with time and then start raising your hand. I don't have this page and then go into a panic attack and start yeah. getting all the oh, yeah, wrong answers true. as you try to complete the exam. No, so you do that yeah. first. Make sure that you have a good grasp. Of of the lay of the land, I guess, no? and then make sure that you are complete yeah. before you begin your exam, and then um, uh, and then when you started answering it, the no? and then you already idea idea uh, knew, no, more or less. E- exiting the first day, what was that like? Like, di ba humana? Oh, finished na biochemistry anatomy. What was the subject that was with that? Biochem and uh, fisio. Anatomy. Uh, no, bio, biochemistry, anatomy, and microbiology. Microbiology. So okay. I was fine. Yeah. yeah since yeah. so what my pre med was med tech, so right. like. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, so it, it played into your yeah. strengths on microbiology. Yeah. Okay. So my strengths. Mm. So did you feel good? <laughs> you feel good? Yeah, I felt okay. Right. Okay. I felt okay. I had a difficult time in anatomy, mm-hmm. which I already expected. Right. Right. But I was I wasn't that uneasy mm-hmm. going into the second day, mm. so. So it was fine. Mm. So in the second day, we had physiology, mm. uh, legal medicine, and pathology. Mm. So uh, I relatively found uh, physiology and pathology okay, mm. since I I think I was playing to my strengths because right. I like those subjects. Right, right, right. But I had a hard time with legal medicine. Mm. So um, so after the first weekend, I was like, okay. So out of the six subjects, I found two. Like really difficult, right. and four I found like um, moderate, like right. I, yeah, manageable. Mm. So after first weekend, I was feeling okay. Okay, so again, this is a marathon. Second weekend, how was it different? 
So the second weekend, so there's like a week gap. Uh-huh. I was very exhausting. Mm-hmm. So in the week gap, I, I was barely studying or oh, reviewing. Okay. I just wanted to rest. Right, right. Yeah, because it was very draining. Right, like I didn't right. realize how draining it would be after the first weekend. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, uh, maybe I just like read a bit here mm-hmm. and there, but then you know I didn't really mm-hmm. review mm-hmm. or prepare much already for the mm-hmm. second weekend. Mm-hmm. So, and then come the second weekend, uh, we had um, internal medicine, mm-hmm. pharmacology, and surgery, mm-hmm. and all three subjects were difficult. Mm-hmm. So difficult subjects. Yeah. So after the third day. Uh, I was very disheartened. Uh-huh. I would say, like, uh, back when I was reviewing, uh, I never really aimed like to top mm-hmm. because I, like, yeah. I knew like the my preparation, my preparation for it. Uh, I wouldn't say it would be enough for me to be confident to say that. Oh, I think I have a good chance of being a top notcher. Yeah. But then, so I just studied with the aim of passing. Right. So when I took the exam, so after the. Like all in all, after the entire PLE, so I was confident that I would pass, okay. um, actually. But uh, I, it never crossed my mind to think that I'd be a top notcher. Mm-hmm. And it, especially after the third day, after those three successive difficult subjects, mm-hmm. uh, in the back of my head, I, I was like, okay, oh, okay, like okay. that's like off the table. Like, okay. Being a top notcher is off the table. But at least you know, I pass. I know I'm gonna pass. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Jude, we're going to take another short break, and as we come back, we're going to talk specifically about that experience. No, you topping the boards, and then we're going to uh, discover a little more what's what's next uh, for Cebu's latest board top notcher. So come join us. Welcome back to My Help Cebu. I'm your host, Dr. Steven Seno. Uh, we are in our final segment of this show and we're talking to uh, Dr. Jude Philip Pozon Sebrecos, no, our latest uh, number one for yeah. the Philipp- <laughs> Philippine Physician Licensure Exam conducted last September 2021. So uh, before we went to the break, we were talking about Jude as in his experiences of taking the exam. And now we're going to start off this segment by talking about uh, this finding out that he actually did top. No? So, Jude, before you we went to the break, you were telling us that you just you felt that you could pass. Uh, you 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 were humble yeah. enough not to say that. Hey, I passed. <laughs> I passed. <laughs> but, but, it, but, it was a humi- <laughs> It was a humility. It was really <laughs> confidence. So it was it was all those years of rigorous training, all those preparation, yeah. plus plus your genetic loading. No, it, it made you think that you know I I can I can pass this exam, and then. And then finally, the day of finding out. So, when did you discover? How, what day was that? What was that? What? How did they publish? How do you know that you passed it the licensure exam? So it was. The results were released five days Fast. after. So we were expecting. Fast. Yeah, we were expecting it to be released in around three days. Actually, ah, longer, shorter. Because they said it would. Yeah, they said it would take only around three days since you know, like the NCR right, people right. had like a different schedule. So. Right. Uh, we were thinking, oh, we were only fewer, so we, we thought it was going to be released right, earlier. Right. So, on the third day, so I was already anxiously waiting for the results. Right. I, didn't, I barely had any sleep, mm. kept on refreshing the page, mm. but to no avail, like, refresh, they said, like, oh, refresh. Like, <laughs> okay. yeah, just constantly on the screen, just refreshing, right, and right. they say, like, you know what, I don't think it's coming out at this point. Right. If it's going to come out, someone's probably going to call me. Yes, yes. So, so the next day, the fourth day after the PLE, right. so I wasn't really avidly waiting right. as compared to the third day. Right. So on the fifth day, uh-huh. um, uh, people were saying, "Oh, from a reliable source, it's really gonna come out today." All right. Okay. So, okay. So I was <laughs> anticipating, okay. but then not really as much as the third day. Right. So I actually had like a thing with uh-huh. my family. Uh-huh. So um, I was planning to meet with my parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, like around like in the evening mm-hmm. like for dinner mm-hmm. so i was with my brother mm-hmm. and we were on our way to meet our parents mm-hmm. so we were struck we were stuck in traffic mm-hmm. uh so we were stuck in traffic and then so i was just scrolling on my phone mm-hmm. and then one of my classmates sent a message like our group chat right. saying like oh my god the results are out okay what, what so time was this I was just on my so can we can have like a, a like, framework Probably around like six, between six to seven p.m. Okay, so late, yeah. late in the day. Okay. So, 
Yeah, so I was just mindlessly scrolling through my phone because right. I was stuck in traffic. Right. And then after I started, so when they said the results were coming out, so I started panicking. Uh-huh. I was shaking. Uh-huh. So uh, even though like I took the exams and I was confident that uh, I was going to pass, mm. like I didn't, like you know, like I didn't want to, you know, maybe think that oh I'm gonna pass. So mm-hmm. like why am I gonna be scared? Mm. So I still felt really anxious at me. Of course. So of course. I was scrolling through. Well, I was scrolling through like my phone, mm. uh, so I was just like on cellular data, mm-hmm. and it was kind of slow. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't really loading. The mm. results didn't come out mm-hmm. first. So when I was going through the page, like I was on letter C, <laughs> where a lot of A's and B's. <laughs> so yeah. I had a difficult time looking for my name. There are a lot of A's so, and B's. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So so it took quite a while. Okay. But then even before when I got uh, to find my name oh. in the list of passers. Ah. Uh, in the master list, so uh, I already received like um, messages from my press saying, "Oh my God, Jude!" And they didn't even say what it was. Right. They just said, "Oh my God, God Jude!" Jude. Okay. They said, "Congrats!" Right. Yeah. So they didn't say. I didn't receive a message saying like, "Oh my God, Jude, you topped the board." Right. It right. was just, right. "Oh my God!" They're like, "What? What happened?" Right. So, right. Um, so after I found my name on the list, right. that was when I checked the list of the top ten. So they didn't tell me like what spot I um, mm. I got. Mm. So I was expecting like, oh probably I'm in the top ten because mm. uh, like why are they reacting this way? Right. So when I actually got to see the top ten list, so I was very surprised. I didn't know the feeling was very surreal. Mm. Like I didn't mm. like, really expect mm. like to be a top notcher and so much more. I didn't expect uh, to garner like the first place right. in the PLE. Right. It was so much more than I asked for. Mm. So, I was about five minutes away oh. from meeting my parents there. Right. Wow. So, when I found out the results, so I met with my parents. So, they actually found out around the same time. So, so we were just celebrating together, Great. like with my family. Wow. Yeah. And then your siblings were you with you at the time, or were they working at the hospital? Yeah. Too? Oh, okay. So good. So it was really um, a family who knew together. It was very, it was very serendipitous. Uh-huh. So I was with my brother, uh-huh. and my sister was already with my parents since she came out of the hospital earlier. Mm. So, yeah. So the five of us were together mm. when we found out okay. that, um, yeah, so, I taught the board right. exam. So happy day. And then, uh, how did? So that we're talking about the family. So this is this is your support group. Uh, these are the folks no, who led you to this point um, and then of course successfully you know you could be there there is no higher success than one okay uh, how did how did your classmates react how did your school react when you got when you when they eventually find out found out so uh, it was my yeah it was my classmates actually uh-huh. and my friends mm-hmm. like even back from my pre-med course so mm-hmm. Uh, like non-stop at that night like my phone just kept on buzzing so uh, just like, I just received an outpouring of congratulations and then uh, like at that time I wanted to be with my family mm-hmm. so at some yeah, point yeah, yeah, like I yeah. turned off my I turned off my internet so right. my phone just would stop buzzing and I'd say like I would get back to them later right, right. so but then I wasn't dismissing them like but I wanted like that time I wanted to be with my family and I wanted to uh, spend most of that um, time and the, uh, and the happiness that I had That's right. I wanted to share it with my right. family right. first and foremost right. and then after that like I also received um, uh, words of congratulations right. from uh, my teachers and my faculty right. like everyone so and from the school mm. so it was very heartwarming yeah, no. like, to right. receive like all these congratulations like from everywhere mm. no, so yeah. it, it really f- what a, makes your heart full no? and, and the heart soars yeah. right? because uh, this, yeah. this is this is uh, affirmation no? so from, from the yeah. boy of seven years old who decided to be a doctor then because yeah. he felt that there was no other <laughs> <Yeah>. choice <laughs> Yeah. That's what he was <laughs> it came. It came full circle. <laughs> full circle. All right, and then end to that point, pa. You know, like a, a a climax of sorts. No, okay. So if if this were um, a movie, you know, you would be at that point or the crescendo. Okay. Sige. 
So, um, in the days that followed, di ba, you, you, I, I was scrolling through the internet, there were several interviews no? so, uh, with you, with the press, no? and then um, what, what, did, what did they focus on when they tried to interview you? What, what did they want to hear from you? Um, probably, um, oh, they wanted to ask about my future plans, yeah, of course, that and that where I plan to eventually hold my practice, mm-hmm. if I was trying to stay here right. or abroad. Right. Um, more on my future plans and how the journey was towards stopping the PLE right. and a bit of politics here and there. Yeah, so, politics? Yeah, so, <laughs> okay. yeah. <laughs> like, so it was tough to answer that one since, you know, yeah. politics can get very... Yeah. Really, but well, uh, we also understand too that, much. that part of your performance yeah. outcomes, if you look at that CHED, the Commission of Higher Education Performance yeah. Outcomes, one of them is nationalism. No, and then yeah, uh, so part of that is participating yeah. in the in whatever electoral process, yeah. no, in, uh, being aware of health system. That's true. Yeah, no, so they, they, and uh, especially nowadays, like health's very political yeah, nowadays. Yeah, yeah. So no. yeah. And then again, no, we, we cannot fence it. No, you have to choose a side. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah. Uh, okay. So let's not go into that. Huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, because we're yeah. really focusing more on on the journey now, and then because yes. uh, what I'm hoping, my good, for the viewers who are listening to us here, um, in in our many platforms that we're showing this, is that they learn from you, Jude. No, kanang what it takes, what what kind of perseverance, what kind of um, effective domain skills that they need to develop to be able to get there, because. What, what I'm hearing, Magud, is a journey not just of cognitive development, but also, you know, developing as a person. No, I, and um, am I understanding the journey correctly? No, I hope I do. No, so, uh, and, and that has led to that. No, and then, um, you know, we are we are individuals, and what I'm picking up also now as a as a self-proclaimed introvert, that's how you chose to celebrate. And then again, the thoughtfulness comes in. <laughs> no, let let me think about this. No, <laughs> let me let me yeah. let me decide first. Yeah. Um, again, we're we're happy to have you as part of the Cebu medical community, you know. And then we're looking forward to what you eventually will become, you know. Um, so I'm, we're not saying that uh, this is your your climax. This is can only be the the first mm. chapter of so many chapters, okay? yeah. And and all of which yes. are going to be successful and noteworthy. So what's next? Hopefully, what's yeah. up for you? No, now that uh, that that part you know, has been crossed, that bridge has been crossed. Uh, what's the next chapter for Dr. Jude? So currently, I'm having my pre-residency mm-hmm. in internal medicine mm-hmm. at Changwa Hospital. Right. So the first goal would be to become an internist first mm-hmm. and foremost. Right. So that would take like roughly three years. Right. That I plan to go into subspecialty training. Right. Another uh, two. Top of my head, my first choice, another two years, right. thinking about GI, right. gastroenterology, right. and probably even further subspecialty training. Mm-hmm. If I'll uh, see. I think I'm going to be studying for so like a longer period Another of time. Another six years. No? Oh, yeah. The top of mind. Yeah. Okay. Tops, yeah. Right. But that's so, not unusual. No? For, for those who are watching, mm-hmm. if you feel as though that's a long time, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's something you get used yeah. to after four years of pre med, right. four years of medical school. Yeah. You know, the years just go by. <laughs> What's another six years, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's another six years. Okay. I've been through eight years. Right. But, but then again, no, yeah. uh, they teach us Mungo, that we are lifelong learners. No, so even if yeah, that's if true. all of the exams have been passed, um, every day is going to be learning something new. No, so whether it be from a textbook or from an encounter or from an experience, yes, no. So and then also, I'm sure your parents will tell you also from their practice. No, they learn something every day. And, and I think that's that's valuable. You no, know, something to remember. Now, um, uh, you know, don't th- think of it as such a as a generous gift. You not know, to be able to learn. Deva kay compete imong cognitive faculties to be able to process this information and more so apply. Okay, so uh, we're we're very happy for that. Yeah, you know, we're we're glad that you chose to stay with us and and continue to serve. You no, know, in the community. So uh, we're about to round off. Uh, round up our our program today and in the last two minutes uh, we usually ask our guests no, to give a few uh, reminders or tips no, on, on how to go about <laughs> things. Yeah. No? And in your case, Jude, let's focus a little about being a student, I guess, no? this part. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's, okay. that's a chapter that you 
recently closed. No? So, uh, for the students out there who are about to embark on similar examinations, uh, maybe Doc Jude can give us a few tips no, on how to go about it. So, uh, Doc Jude, you? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I think my advice, maybe not necessarily just for people planning to go into medicine, mm -hmm. but maybe for any other field for that matter, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, I think the most important thing that you need to do in order to succeed is the determination and the grit to and the willingness to persevere and sacrifice in order to achieve what you want to become or the things that you want to get in the future. Because, for example, even if... And to use like the faculties that were given to you, like appropriately, because I think like even if I was... Like personally, if even if I was given... Um, this um, cognitive um, faculty, mm. um, if I didn't put in the necessary effort, mm. the necessary sacrifice, mm. I don't think I would be where I am right now. Right. So I think you have to, uh, my advice would be to make use of the resources mm. that you have around mm. you, maximize them, and then just persevere, and then just develop this passion mm -hmm. for doing the things that you want to do. Right. So especially for something as difficult as medicine, right. it's something that you have to want to become, mm -hmm. like a doctor, mm -hmm. it's something that you, uh, you want to become. And medicine is something that you have to love. If you didn't love it at first, it's something you have to learn to love because it's a lifelong commitment, right. like being a physician. Right. So uh, probably like uh, for a student, I'd say uh, also, learn to take care of yourself right. like men especially mentally so that's very important so as i said during my first year i was uh my notes was stuck in my books but mm -hmm. in the as the years progressed like i realized that i needed an outlet aside from medicine mm -hmm. so i think that's also something important that you need to find an outlet whatever it may be mm -hmm. like getting into an organization or you have a creative outlet maybe you do painting mm -hmm. or artwork mm -hmm. or dance for that matter or anything i think it's important to have something aside from uh what you're into as of the moment so as to not really overwhelm yourself with one thing yeah okay so i, so I, I think nothing further to add to that you that was so yeah. passing okay so again i'd like to thank our guest now the philippine physician licensure exam september 2021 board top notcher from cebu uh dr jude philip on Sebrekos. No? Jude, thank you for joining us and to our audience. Thank you. Thank you. I hope thank you, you enjoyed Dr. Our, our program today and I hope you learned something yes. and you are inspired yeah. on a similar journey as you did. So, yeah. Cebu, stay safe, stay healthy and thank you for joining us today at My Health Cebu. Thank you.